All right. So we are here with Josh Roddy. He, a.k.a. Roddy for some. I don't sure. know if you have any other nicknames. J-Rod. He's got, J-Rod. He's got tons of them. Yep. Uh, so he is actually my first cousin. And uh, he's our guest on our podcast today. Mm-hmm. So he has been at Think, uh, how long now? <laughs> five? Uh, March. Next year will be six years. Yeah, so five, five and a half years. Mm-hmm. And so he's going to tell us a little bit, I guess, tell us like what you do here, how you got started. Started with Think March 1st of 2018. Uh, I come from customer service sales background my whole life. Uh, That's all the positions I ever held. Um, I reached out uh, to my cousin um, who... Uh, was starting a company with this incredible man right here, and I knew I wanted to be part of it. At the time that I had reached out, there wasn't a position available, and Sean, you know, basically Dr. V, uh, had told me, you know, there's nothing right now, but if I have something, you know, I'll let you know, right? And so I kind of went back to my job. I was living in Kansas City at the time, and a um, few months later, about six months or so, maybe less, because this was around the holidays that we had this discussion, uh, and it was about February, or, yeah, mid-February, um, Jacob reached out and said, hey, I may have something for you. Um, you know, do you want to make this happen? And I said, yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'm leaving Kansas. I'm coming you to You don't want to stay there? <laughs> well, you know, I, there was things that had happened in life, you know, personal and um, some um, medical things that made me come to a realization that I wanted to be back around family and, and friends and familiar um, mm-hmm. areas. So... It's kind of a situation where I felt like, man, if this really would have turned into something worse, I'd be up here alone, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We all know that there's plenty of uh, families dealing with a bunch of medical stuff, right? So um, anyhow, moved back down to Houston, um, took what I could. Uh, Sean said, I have this position for you, and um, I need you, you know, to to do your best with, you know, what I'm providing, right, In, in regards to ABA, yeah, uh, I think there was a gentleman. I don't know if somebody was there prior. Really, wasn't cutting the mustard. Um, you needed someone you could trust. <laughs> yeah, right. You needed someone that can be loyal and and provide you um, feedback. And so that's my first gig was here at ABA uh, when we uh, were seeing the little kid. I loved it. I really did. Uh, I loved interacting with the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, gear, I don't know if I could say some of the kids' names, but edit that out. No. Some of them yeah. would stop by my office almost every day on their way to the cafeteria, um, give me a fist bump, and, you know, it really made me feel like uh, I was being noticed by these kids because I'm not a dad, right? I don't have, you know, a child of my own. Um, I have a lot of nieces and nephews and, and younger um, um, you know, cousins who have young kids and whatnot, but... Mm-hmm. It's been it's been fun, interesting, challenging. Um, initially, um, once the ABA had kind of moved into other uh, phases, we um, then assigned myself with um, online scheduling. So at that point, it was just something like a Google form uh, that Jacob had created via a link, and so parents would go to our website at that point. I think this was before we even were partnered with Patient Pop. Um, and so initially I got a lot of experience with, you know, I have prior experience with outbound calling and cold calling people. And so I didn't have any kind of fear in calling a parent to help them schedule. My, uh, concerns were, and I always have been at any job I've ever had is my knowledge, the knowledge of what I'm, um, you speaking know, about, speaking yeah. about the yeah. service, the product, whatever it is. Um, and so I gained that by having access to you and Sean and, and Jacob and, and asking those questions and learning and, and, and building that knowledge. And it just only made me that much more confident. Um, and so now I can call anyone or take any call about uh, scheduling anything, whether it be, you know, before working here, I never knew what microcephaly was. <laughs> I never knew what macrocephaly was. Um, I never knew... Um, you know, the medical term for fainting, syncope, right? Uh So there's a bunch of growth that my brain was absorbing. Um, And so anyhow, moved from online scheduling to um, more doing a little bit of the facility stuff as well with the online scheduling, uh, started getting a little bit more responsibility when it comes to 
the emails, watching the info, watching the fax server, ensuring mm-hmm. the faxes are getting worked. There's been a bunch of different processes that have played out that have led to where we are now, um, where we have uh, over 10 agents abroad working for us, uh, and they were tr- cross-trained, but mostly, you know, when it comes to the whole scheduling and referral aspect, mm-hmm. you know, I did my best to provide them the knowledge that I've carried from my previous positions when it comes to you know being kind being respectful and honest right yeah show up to work be honest be kind and help people and the universe will work out for you right Mm -hmm. don't try to get too much into the religious aspect but if you're a god-fearing man then you know it's a blessing and if you're someone that relies on rolling the craps you know the dice then you know, what's what's the loss, right? So you're, you're helping kids and you're getting paid, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, we've, we've, we've definitely evolved, or I have for sure, um, since joining Think. And we'll hopefully continue to learn and uh, develop employees that can mirror the mission that Dr. Varghese is trying to disperse, right? And one of the things I thought you guys may ask me today is, you know, why think or, you know, why, why do you want to work for think? What I would tell people is if they have not yet seen the purpose video that Dr. Varghese made, then that would be my answer. Mm -hmm. Just go watch the purpose video Mm -hmm. and I don't even have to sit here and explain it. Right. Um, If you don't get goosebumps and your hair doesn't get raised, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Uh, (laughs) It just means you may not have the same type of uh, emotions and caring heart that I do. I don't know. So yeah, no, for <laughs> each, sure. To each their own, right? Um, but, yeah, there's a little bit of, of my journey, I think. Yeah, you know, I think that touches base on one of the reasons why I started Think was, sure, we're going to take care of patients, but also I took uh, a chance to provide people an opportunity mm-hmm. to be employed uh, to grow to what do they really want out of life? Sure. Um, you know, maybe even people that struggle in life, like how do we help them? How do you lend a helping hand? Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like, you know, let's just talk about some personal stuff. And when I think <laughs> of you and, uh, when you started, uh, <laughs> it's getting real. what's the one of the, what, it, what did I tell you when you first started here? What's the thing that I told you you had to do to start working here? Uh, one like th- personal thing. Like what did well, you, one thing tell you had to stop? Quit smoking. Uh, uh-huh. sh- Dr. Regis is not a big fan of uh, fumar, <laughs> the smell of smoke. Uh, so I took it upon myself saying, okay, this man is going to give me the opportunity to uh, grow with his company and something I wanted to be a part of rather than working for, you know, you know Fortune 500 that necessarily didn't know who I was or the effort I was putting forth for them, right? Um, so I was like, yep, this is this is going to happen. I'm gonna, and I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't picked up a cigarette since 2018. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's a big deal. Big it, it was. It was. Um, and it definitely helped in the dating world as well. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. so that's a big thing. When I think of you at Think, uh, even though you're an employee, like one of my favorite things about your journey is that you quit smoking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, awesome. versus, you know, sure. daily life, I think. Knowing that you're not moving forward doing that's a big deal to me. So I think that's step one. And then you're talking about dating and all this stuff. And now you're engaged. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's you stop smoking. You're engaged. Uh, you you now have your own car yeah. that you're doing. You know, sure. you're doing all that stuff on your own. The growth that I've seen in you has been amazing. So Thank that's you. the kind of stuff I see in individuals. It's not just about uh, – I already know you're skilled in – talking to people i know you can talk yeah. to people yeah. okay <laughs> we all know that sure, sure. but i think getting into the weeds of stuff that people don't like talking about is what i want to do so that's that's a that's a yeah, big I undertaking mean, igniting you did that human potential that's yeah. you know i i never understood it but you know once you you preach that message yeah. i got it i was like that's exactly what he's doing for me and the kids right yeah, so yeah. It's, it's everybody it's yeah. even even myself and my wife and my yeah. kids so sure. that that's a, a cool part um of, of this whole thing yeah and that's that's why i'm so grateful to be part of it and yeah. i feel like if you never knew you know if you don't know the grass is greener you know you, you don't know you only can live your life by the experiences you've had yeah mm-hmm. and you can only make the future choices 
based upon those previous experiences, right? It's, right. You know, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in love with Think and always yeah. will be. So. And it's not always easy because I call myself a, like a little pressure cooker because I always want everybody to be the best. Sure. So I'm that person that says things that uh, you don't necessarily want to hear, but I'm doing it out of love. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've always understood that. Um, I know Christina does, and mm-hmm. uh, we do at home. Yeah, I think it's great that you and Christina don't want mediocre. Yeah, yeah. No, right. And yeah. there's some business owners that are happy with mediocre because mm-hmm. their lifestyle is where they want it, and they're fine with it. But if we stuck with mediocre, we wouldn't be where we are. Right. Yeah, right. he's always striving for excellence. Yeah. I think pushing everyone to – sure be the best self that they we can. all need it i mean yeah. i i'm not personally that self-motivated the way mm-hmm. you are right mm-hmm. um i am motivated yeah but not to the extent that you are right mm-hmm. and it takes people like you to create companies like this that creates basically economy 101 right it's just that's the way it works so um yeah it's a trickle down effect mm-hmm. yeah no, thanks for sharing that. Yes, sir. Um, another idea I was thinking about with you was, so in in the medical field, there, you have you know your front desk and you got the phones ringing, you got mm-hmm. the doctors running around, mm-hmm. um, seeing patients. Um, we've kind of broken it down into different as- aspects within Think. Um, things that people usually overlook, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is sure. one is scheduling. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all like, oh, you got a scheduling center here or scheduling's not doing their job. And, mm-hmm. you know, take away all that um, into scheduling. We have a scheduling department that's mm-hmm. led by you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had no medical experience pr- prior. No. So what it takes, a couple of things. What does it take to be in scheduling in general? And then I got some questions to follow. Me personally, I may be overkill with some things, but I, first I like obviously to actively listen to what the caller or the individual is telling you. That's key, right? If you're having to have to have the person or individual repeat themselves over and over and over, it can get quite frustrating. Um, so I always try to set the expectation, actively listen, probe for the concern, mm-hmm. Offer the solution and commit to it. There you go. Right? My model is PSC. Probe, solve, commit. Yeah. So I'm probing. What is the problem? What is the issue, ma'am? Why are you seeking pediatric neurology? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have an appointment. That's the solution. Here's the date and time with this physician. Do you want it? Yes. Commit. Lock it in. Send the details. Right? But always, you know, what I like to do is make sure that when a parent shows up to a clinic... There's very minimal questions that need to be asked because they were explained the process thoroughly over the phone. That's what I truly feel is beneficial for scheduling. And that's with anything. If I was scheduling a hair appointment, um, I would, you know, my fiance is a hairdresser. (laughs) I would say stylist. stylist, stylist. Um, If I was doing that, I would convey to the caller, hey, so this is a hair dye and a blowout or whatever. And those are things I never knew either before uh, knowing her. (laughs) So (laughs) the learning medical industry and as well as as fashion. But uh, you would want to just convey the details to the individual and ensure you've you've offered them a solution that they're going to be happy with. Mm Yeah, I think that's that's crucial. You know, when you call a doctor's office to schedule, it's typically what's your name, what's your date of birth. Okay, we have your information. Uh, when would you like the appointment? Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear you. You're like, hey, uh, how are you today? Mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. going on? Mm-hmm. Um, are you you know are you doing okay? Sure. Um, what concerns do you have? You ask questions. You actually uh, form a connection over a phone. Uh, like you're meeting somebody for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like think teaching getting everybody to know that. Them, having the finesse, like you have the finesse. And sure. I think you try to teach all everybody in scheduling that I component do. of it. But, oh, like, oh, I know exactly where, you know, this pharmacy is. Like that's right next to, you know, yeah, Whataburger. The Whataburger yeah. <laughs> yeah. They love it, you know. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it when I am talked to by any company, I you know, whether it's the – my electrical company or Mm -hmm. the people I lease my or you know rent my car get my car from whatever it is right no matter what entity I'm dealing with I want to be treated 
like I'm a person, not a customer. Yeah. Right. And so when a parent hears, oh, yeah, when you hear, oh, it's a CVS next to the Canes. Oh, yeah, that's it. How'd you know? <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah. Violet loves chicken fingers, too. You know, whatever it is. So, you know, I get it. Um, and, you know, I just, you know, it's the old adage of do unto others. Right? Yeah. That, you yeah. Know, so Personal that's what we try connection. to. Yeah, yeah, building rapport with yeah. a parent is very, very important. Yeah, so I think those are things that set us apart that you bring to the table that uh, other companies don't have, and we appreciate. Uh, you're talking about in a call center, you listen. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about in a call center and scheduling department where you actually show empathy. Mm -hmm. Like, what scheduling company in the world is sitting with their agents talking about empathy? Sure. Like, point zero 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 one percent mm -hmm. right we were probably one of three so that right there is what makes this group different it's not just about dollars it's not just about number of patients True. every patient you see is high quality mm -hmm. and then every patient that calls or parent that calls feels love mm -hmm. so i think yeah. you know and you're able to carry that into each uh new agent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so that's that's something that you probably don't see. And the purpose of these podcasts is for us to break down what I actually see. I'm not seeing just a person. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. everything in between. It's the glue in between where that it connects everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Even the progress of the contact center. So we used to outsource it. Yeah. And then two mm -hmm. years ago, we decided we need to bring this in house because the level of service mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. were getting from this outside company was mm -hmm. not to our standards but sure. we saw what you were doing with scheduling because you were doing the online referrals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're like well if he can do it that great like we can get people to sure. people in here to do it ourselves and you know growing that like that was a big undertaking for you mm -hmm. uh growing our own contact center so now that we have control over that we can we can teach our agents these important sure. you know characteristics that we want them to have and mm -hmm portray to our patients so yeah, and i think that was an awesome benefit bringing it in-house because mm -hmm. yeah. you're allowed we at that point not necessarily we're not allowed but we were uh the capabilities of oversight were were you know ex much larger than they were with somebody that was in a different you know location yeah. had different supervisors these individuals i can contact right away we can talk we can you know obviously you know zoom team meetings is uh, preferred right for that that physical connection but i think the oversight and the ability to oversight them definitely help with the improvement of the quality yeah, yeah. and sure. you're big on that quality control is like yeah no you're... i just want to make sure they're not you know and that's the awesome thing is they're really sweet honest kind uh um individuals to be team teamed up with i, I really yeah. enjoy working with them um and they do their very best to to try to go above and beyond yeah they do you know in pediatric neurology um we take care of many different types of uh individuals whether it's newborns uh young adults mm -hmm. in college um what are some do you have any stories that stick out in mind or any parents that have gone on a phone um that have always been in your mind like this is just made an impact made an impact on you well i mean every day that i talk to a parent and i'm able to you know potentially accommodate a sooner appointment because as you all know right um pediatric neurology is an underserviced area mm -hmm. uh there's a very large you know group or you know bunch of families that need the services we offer uh however it's very limited Therefore, you know, even in a big city like Houston, uh, a parent, um, you know, may be at their wit's end because every clinic they've called, uh, they can't get anything until August or, you know, they can't get anything until 2024. Yeah. And so every day I have some form of an experience with a parent who's very, very, very appreciative um, to get in a kiddo within seven days from, you know, a concussion event or a uh, syncope event or, you know, potentially a first time seizure event at mm -hmm. school, right? These are all, and I, I try to my best to explain to parents that neurology is a very investigative process. Um, and here we like to dot the I's and cross the T's. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as far as, one, and obviously we can't use names and whatnot, but there was a, a mom who, you know, 
uh, was very, very emotional um, when we were able to get, you know, her two month old in uh, for an appointment within days of her pediatrician referring to where she was calling text, you know, other entities uh, and being told, you know, the wait time was quite long. And so that's another, you know, beneficial um, process we have here at Think Neurology for Kids in regards to our policy of doing our very best to get emergent type cases in. Mm -hmm. um, now, are we able to get all kiddos in that, you know, we do our very best, um, but we do have to make executive decisions and prioritizing the need of a patient and potentially, um, you know, the, you know, for example, a pediatrician reaching out to make us aware of the emergent you know, situation. So yes, uh, definitely some parents that I'll never forget. Um, and it's it's uh for me i don't want to use the word hero uh, but it does make you feel that way mm -hmm. it does make you feel like man i just put on you know my uh took off my clark kent and put on my <laughs> my cape and made it happen right and so i feel like anyone that i train i try to trickle down that feeling right mm -hmm. and i think and i feel that most of them feel that way when they're able to mm -hmm. right and so, yeah, plenty of parents that uh, I have memories for, for sure. You're talking about you don't have any biological kids, and mm -hmm. you're basically you'll be a you'll be a stepdad. Sure. And you used to always talk about that with me, mm -hmm. like, what's that like? Where are you now? I know y'all have a really good relationship. I think you have nothing but good things to say about Violet. Um, tell me about that experience and what what, what and, you're thinking now. Violet is uh, his fiance's daughter. Just yeah, so everyone she'll knows. be yeah. Uh, 14 in February, so she just turned 13. So we're dealing with that whole fun yeah. age, yeah. fun age. And Violet, he has nothing but good. Things to oh, say yeah, about no, you, I, okay? I admire. <laughs> let's let's uh, put that out there. No, yeah, I admire. I got your back. And, and love Violet tremendously. Um, I, you know, again, never. I don't have kids of my own. Y'all know this. Uh, the closest I ever got to being a dad was probably helping out with my uh, sister's uh, kids, but I didn't know how I would be, you know, as a dad. And there's a bunch of different dynamics at play, right? Like she does have a dad, and she does have a mom, and. Where do I fall into that? Yeah, like in my big. in my disciplinary, do I just kind of like you know hang and, out, like yeah, chill, you know, make I, it fun. One of my best friends actually is my best friend. He went through you know divorce when he was you know younger and had a few stepdads uh, growing up, and he kind of just reminded me, hey, you know, be her friend, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like she has a dad. He's around. She has a mom. You know, and <laughs> Sarah's definitely the more disciplinarian. Just, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Be, I mean, hey, don't get in trouble, dude. Right? Edit that out. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, coming to you for advice and, you know, anyone that, you know, I knew had kids, you know, yeah. like, hey, how do I, you know, what should I do, right? And you kind of had similar advice, right? Just be there, support her when she needs it, right? You know, try to, you know, talk with Sarah about the whole disciplinary thing, right? But, um yeah, it's 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 uh it's not my biological daughter, but if it came down to it, uh, I'm jumping in front of the the train for her. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Aww. No, really, she, she's gonna go on to do some amazing things. Um, and obviously, she has an amazing mother. Um, but I think it's it's kind of like you know the the DNA you've been you know blessed with, right? She's just has that self God given drive to want to. Do better, Excel, and be get everything, yeah. do everything she can, right? She's so, doing, what sport is she she's doing? doing dance. dance. She made You're a dance. dance. Dad. She made, yeah, <laughs> dance made, dad. Let's go. <laughs> she made the dance about. team You're captain. Dance she's playing the viola. She's, she, you know, she's, she's doing amazing things. But she's also starting to mess with Snapchat, which we're all gonna try to stay away from until we're. <laughs> I wish I could tell her until to we're fifty. From. God, it's crazy. I don't know if y'all ever like no. use it. I've used it a few times. What are we missing? What are we missing? Okay, or not missing? Me and Sarah were like using it last night because I was showing y'all that map, the Snap Map. Yeah, oh, yeah, snap map. Okay. yeah. No, you told me about it. I don't know anything, and then I got on there. So the Snap Map is works just like Google Maps or whatever, and you can, you know, it's kind of like uh, iPhone. I don't have an iPhone, but. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> you um, gotta get the I've iPhone. I've been trying to convince you to I'm get an iPhone the, for years. I'm tired of the green bubble. I know. Man. Green Give bubble. me a blue bubble. I'll buy you the and iPhone. And then it's a group I text, saw, and it's like, who liked this whole message? That's how diehard people are. Like, you're so 
anti Apple. I want to buy you a phone, no. and you're like, eh. no. like I don't I know, know what to do. I you know, dude, I don't know. Like, I just love the the Google product. I love the Android. Everything syncs to my Google Gmail. I don't have anything iCloud. I've never had any Apple IDs, and so. When I log onto a website, it asks, do you want to log in with Facebook or Google? It never asks, do you want to log in with, you know, so I just always. I mean, I still log in with my Gmail, like, to stuff. Sure, sure. You can sure. still have a Google account. I actually saw a comedic skit the other day on Instagram <laughs> where it was a gentleman saying, when you show up in a group chat as a green bubble, People treat it's people treat you worse than like <laughs> racism. Like it's crazy. Like you're just totally like X'd out of the group. Yeah, like. right? No. Okay. I'm just gonna throw it out there and be really honest right now. If I send a group text, there's like one of the, the moms in, in the kids' school that oh, does gosh. not have an She's iPhone. probably like, Am I that mom? <laughs> She's a mom that right mom. She knows. That. Oh, we no. have a conversation. And I can't include her in the group text. So oh. I always have to send her a separate message Wait, because it's gonna mess. Love her, it I, still mess love her. It I still love her. I still message her but yeah. it can't be in the group like yeah. if i send a picture See, that's kind of stuff it's I like feel a like... separate message uh, yeah. Yeah, i do the uh, same you know i send everybody a message and then i send you one that's with, why you're not with in a picture because <laughs> i don't if i send a picture with you in it it degrades it it's messed <laughs> sometimes, up. sometimes i'm just like quiet in the group chat when i get it i'm just like don't you're say like, anything. i can't like it don't say anything unless they call for you like yeah. that yeah. night we left Who's the person the night we left that uh the Joe Nico Foundation yeah, yeah, yeah. Gala. Joe Nico. Yeah. There yeah. was a group text sent out. <laughs> and I replied like something like, everyone get home safe or, you know. And it was like, who's the green bubble? <laughs> and then Betsy's like, it's J-Rod. And it was like, there was just like this like, whole wah, thing. Wah, wah, wah. I'm yeah. not going to reply to group text. Anyways, but back to the stuff. It's a hot topic. Yeah, yeah, it is. Across yeah. the world. Like, the way that kids are interacting, like, from iCloud, Android, I, whatever, the way that they can interact on Snapchat is, like, beyond what we ever could have thought of when we were kids texting. When it comes to, like, the, the ability to send, like, GIFs, like, the, the memes, like, the quick, like, videos, mm -hmm. it's just Snapchat but is... But just because it, like, disappears? Well, like, is it, that the unique it part? used to disappear. So oh. now with Snap, you can save every message. You can screenshot. But if I, like, let's say you send me a message, I can screenshot it. Uh -huh. But you know I screenshotted it. Okay. Snapchat sends you a message. So, like, if says, I'm sending you something, can I choose that I want yeah, it to disappear? Yes, yes. Okay. Why do we want stuff to disappear? Well, I can see why some sure. teenagers would want that or, like, kids. Like, yeah, you're, if sending you're sending something, something like, that's, it's yeah. inappropriate and you uh, want it to disappear. I wasn't yeah. allowed to do anything as a kid, so I... <laughs> Yeah. I actually don't I know. But nowadays, <laughs> kids are figuring out ways to hide apps inside apps. Wow. So they'll download, like, an app that looks like a calculator. Okay. But they'll hide their yeah. Tinder app inside, like, another app, right? And so their okay. significant other never knows that they're That's up to no good. Yeah. It's nuts. It's wild. The, the level of technology available to someone just for their phone. That's why I don't understand why sometimes, you know, like there's complex situations that come across your you know life and you know there's like this little whoa to help you out like really yeah. you know so i don't know uh, anyways but it is kind of scary uh uh the capabilities of of you know snapchat and other mm -hmm. different kind of apps and now with so. the ai you know it's you can literally ask any question mm -hmm. um and it'll try to give you an answer yep a lot of times the answer is actually pretty good mm -hmm. i don't know if you've tried chat gpt i have i messed around with a little bit you know i'm more scared about like people using that type of stuff maliciously i think they've already been doing that sure i think yeah. it's already been happening sure. it's just now it's more commercialized no, it has been for sure you're, no yeah you're the conspiracy yeah. theorist in the group for sure. yeah there's a lot of i don't want to dive into the whole <laughs> i mean you can it'll open up a whole can of worms but you know, there's a lot more going on in the background than people know. That's true. Do you believe in aliens? I do. <laughs> I most certainly feel as if it would probably be highly unlikely due to, you know, what we know that there's not some other form of life. Now, do I think it's like the alien, like on, uh, um, what was that movie with, uh, Mel was it Mel Gibson? Oh my gosh, with we're the, terrible with yeah, movies. We're never signs? Get this yeah, I've never right. seen signs. I've seen signs. Okay. I'm sure we've seen So that alien remember. that like walks inside. Yeah. Like I don't picture an alien like that. I picture an alien that could be anything. Like look right? like us? 
I mean, you can't necessarily. Or like I mean, a blob. It could be like an amoeba. Yeah. You know, on on <laughs> Titan on Mars. somewhere. You know, like Titan is full of water, right? And the moon of Jupiter. So, but that's just our solar system. Like, mm -hmm. you know, try to explain to somebody that there's more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on the planet is mind boggling. It like, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, what? You know, like, so I can understand how some people would, you know, but. Do I think the Earth is flat? No, you know? yeah, uh, not that crazy, right? That but, was that was pre-think. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah no. we converted you. Yeah, yeah. When I, when I learned about what microcephaly was, I learned <laughs> the world wasn't flat. <laughs> no, no. But you know, there's there's definitely some things that you know I uh, have beliefs about that uh, some people would consider a little conspiracy. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I find it, I find it always, you never want to accept what you, someone else is telling you is fact. Yes. Don't you want to learn about it like yourself? Like for yourself, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think that, that point right there is huge. I'm, a, sure. I'm big on that. You yeah. can't just believe everything that people say. No. Question it for yourself. Yeah. Correct. Find Do your it. own research. Correct. Yeah, look yeah. on Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean. That's where people get information yeah. from now. There's a lot of different places <laughs> like, to I get information. It, okay? Yeah, I learned it on TikTok. Like, if crazy. you're getting valid information from, you know, 900 sources, you know, out, out of 1,000, it's probably good information. But if some of your information is only posted to 80 out of the 1,000, how reliable? is that right yeah but me you know i like like reuters i don't know reuters news i don't know, I don't know some people pronounce it reuters or reuters but um i like them because they seem fair consistent and they tell it how it is right to where some you know news networks want to post nothing but you know murder mm -hmm. right yeah. or, or death mm -hmm. and you know we are unfortunately as a society you know interested in that stuff right yeah uh, morbid uh curiosity or whatever yeah. it is right but, you know, for me, I, I'm more about, like, the good news movement. Yeah. <laughs> try to, at least. Uh, but, yeah, so when it comes to, you know, conspiracies, there's plenty out there that I, I scratch my head about, for sure. Yeah. We always no have good about. conversations at lunch. It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's when all of them come out. Yeah, my no. favorite lunch my favorite lunch memory of Josh, okay, is the day the that he... Stop, drop, and roll. Yeah, stop, drop, and roll. But it wasn't just that. He's like, listen... <laughs> I know how to survive if your parachute <laughs> doesn't open <laughs> and you're you're uh, skydiving. <laughs> We're like, what? What? <laughs> like, I don't think you can survive. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, no. I learned that <coughs> in military school. And he yeah. like jumped on the table in the lunchroom and showed us exactly how you have to land like with a tuck and roll like he we're still all eating table. i'm putting a sandwich in my mouth and i'm seeing this dude <laughs> jump off the table as he hits the floor he does a roll and roll. immediately pops up <laughs> and we were all like we actually made him do it again because like it, it was so fast i didn't see it that yeah crazy. i was like that's like, life here you know yeah, yeah. i never knew oh. if that was like an urban legend but that was <laughs> i went to military school in boonville missouri uh it was outside of columbia where university of missouri is off interstate 70 and like three hours from uh st louis anyhow uh, a paratrooper ex-paratrooper was my rotc instructor or jrotc and he said, you know, it was highly unlikely, but if there was ever a circumstance where you needed this, this is what they taught us to do. And in my head, I'm thinking, it's crazy, but, you know, if you hit a steep enough angle, I don't know, maybe oh it's possible. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, okay? I don't think it's possible. It is not going to work. <laughs> it. It's that would be the sure. end. I guess and if you're in the air and you're on your way down, what are you gonna tell? Do I give yeah. up or do I at least That's try true. to roll? I mean, at least you can try. At least you can try. You hit the earth at that right, you know. But here's the thing: I like the fact <laughs> that you would still try to survive. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna just be like. Uh, you're gonna be like. You gotta try. You're calculating the angle at which you're gonna roll at. But the yeah. real you know? question is like, has anyone survived that actually did that? Somebody yeah, has. Like, Somebody has. Uh, yeah, did the guy say I, that? Did yeah, he say I never I don't know. I never like researched it enough to <laughs> Let's I would not like crazy. to think I'd like to think if there was a scenario to where you you open your parachute, you're you know, kinda of doing your thing, you're floating down, right? Maybe a bird comes along, <laughs> hits it, and then like you're, you're like you do have enough time to roll. You know, like, an eagle. Okay, there so could the be a situation. Still out. Or maybe it's you're coming like, up on like a nice like hill in Scotland where there's like a you know there oh, is a. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
throwing out scenarios. So you might survive yeah. if yeah. you if you you're jumping over the Sahara. Jump and there's have, like a hill. You yeah. just need to sure. skydive where there's hills. Yeah, or if you got like a maybe a last second like a wire tangle or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wild okay. imagination, there, guys. Okay. My imagination. Is... I'm not going I, parachuting I'm not with going y'all. Scared of skydiving <coughs> yeah. ever. It's just That's, not your, something Leah I did that when I she, know. First, when she, right when she turned 18. <laughs> yeah, nothing. My youngest sister. She's mm-hmm. the rebel. Uh, I don't think. I don't think I could desire. ever go skydiving. Nah. So nah. you've never, you've never gone. No. Yeah, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to. I'm going to Vegas for my first time in uh, July. You've never been to Vegas. What? Never been to Vegas. Mm-mm. Oh my gosh, that's like our favorite. We actually had our honeymoon in Vegas. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> so during like, residency, we did not know that. Resident. It was after our intern year. We had no vacation. 2009. <laughs> yeah. Eight. 2010. Yeah. Ten. And I got married in ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 2010. I don't know why I yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Tiffany got married in eight, but anyway, so we had a few days off and we're like, well, where can we go? Like we can't travel abroad because we only had a few days. So we were like, let's go to Vegas. And how many times have y'all been since? Like. Six. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. where you got the, the, the transformers. Transformers. Yeah. Yeah. Met that guy there. Califano. Yeah. yeah. But like every time we go, we love it. It's all, it's so yeah. fun there. I've never been. Sarah yeah, loves enjoy. it there. Yeah. So what are y'all going to do? It's my 41st birthday, so uh-huh, we're going uh-huh. for that weekend. Um, we don't really plan to, so we are, it's a couple's trip. So uh, a girl that she works with, uh, Christine and her uh, boyfriend are going to come with us. The plan right now so far is obviously just a pool party. We're mm-hmm. going to hit one of those mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. We're staying at the Palazzo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was really nice. So, um, and then. That's not how you say it. Come on. The oh. Venetian <laughs> Palazzo. You're Italian. Man. Palazzo. Palazzo. <laughs> Yeah, they have Palazzo. Come on, Josh. Where's the Italian? So, I don't know. We may do like that city tour. It's like 90 bucks oh, yeah. a person. They put you in a helicopter for 20 minutes and fly oh, you around the fun. city at night. So, yeah. that's, that's a good one. So far. So, yeah. Oh, I'm excited awesome. to go. We, we went, one of the years we went, it wasn't good weather. It was like in the winter. And we were like, let's do a helicopter tour from Grand Canyon. Vegas right there. There's the airport all the way to the Grand Canyon. It's go? not very far on the helicopter, but. We went, but it was like raining. There were high winds. They're like, it's okay. They're only like 50 mile an hour gusts. If it gets to 60, then we we ground the helicopters. And we're uh, like, well, that's really close. Know, like, is this safe? Out. Well, I didn't know all this. She, yeah. This is new information. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I that they had the talked guy. about it. I asked the guy about Sean it. has a fear of dying. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have gotten <laughs> on the helicopter. Yeah. So, like, it was really choppy. <laughs> he got so motion sick. Uh, I'm gonna throw up everywhere. <laughs> Have you been on a helicopter since? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did I was it fine. In, yeah. uh, They're really cool. Yeah. I've been on yeah. one. When you, but this is good weather. Sure. Like, I was fine until the pilot was like, you know, actually, there's like brown bags ready for if you need to throw up. I'm like, what do you? Why would I need to throw up? Mm-hmm. And then the lady in front of me was like, okay, that's good to know. And I'm like, okay, so I'm thinking about it, mm-hmm. thinking about it. And I'm like, okay. I feel, feel super nauseous now. So, like, I held it the whole time. Mm. But, yeah, it was, it was an interesting yeah. experience. Yeah, that wasn't that fun. But I, the Grand Canyon was cool. Compared yeah. to, like, a plane, like, there's no, like, with a plane, you're, like, you're doing, like, the takeoff thing, yeah. right? Yeah. To where, like, you're building up the speed, you can feel it, you can hear it. When you're in a helicopter, it's just all of a sudden, yeah, you're just yeah. like, what just yeah. happened, yeah. right? And, like, even though you know the blades aren't going to hit you, you still feel like they are. So you're like, you well, know, I haven't ever thought of that. that. Yeah, I did. I'm a taller guy. <laughs> Where were the blades? The How big is this helicopter uh, you're, like, uh, you're getting in, on? Uh, we were in Hawaii. Jeez. Oh, okay. It was me, the my mini dad, helicopter. and his brother. So you're in it. And so they thought we were, like, NFL rejects. They're, you know, we're all, like, six, you know, six, two. My dad's big. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's what he said. He's like, so what are you guys, the NFL bench warmers? Like, the guy, uh, the pilot. You know? Why do you have to be bench warmers? <laughs> that's messed up. Like, we didn't look like athletes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Retirees. That's and, messed uh, up. Okay, your dad and uncle. Yeah. Like, like, like the, because, like, the way that they have to do it is, like, disperse the weight, like, through yeah. the cap. Remember like, so, they, like, weighed us? Yeah. We had to get on a scale. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they make remember. you stand yeah, on a scale before you board. <laughs> yeah, yeah I remember, like, the whole thing. So, like, but I remember, like, they're like, don't worry. The blades aren't going to, you know, you can walk normal. <laughs> but, you know, there's these things above your head. Like, Oh, we didn't walk while it was going. They did. We got on, oh, yeah. and then they started. The it was thing. on, and that's we sketchy. walked oh, up wow. to it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, maybe that's a little. So you're instinctively, you're like, <laughs> doing this thing but you don't have to you were like crouching yeah down. yeah but i thought it was super cool like the way it just kind of lifts yeah. off and 
Anyway, so, so y'all are doing a helicopter. Hope, tour. That'll that, be fine. It'll be fine. That'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, you won't throw up and you won't hit your head. I mean, yeah. just make yeah. sure. I mean, it's July in Vegas, it's pretty like <laughs> dry. dry and, yeah, you know, that's what they all say. There's gonna be wind and rain. I mean, yeah. I know at night it can get kind of. Yeah. Y'all should go see a show. Yeah, no, we we want to do that. There's yeah. gonna be a night, you know, where the casinos involved. I'm not much of a gambler, but my plan is to uh, designate a hundred dollars. Okay. And I'm gonna walk over to a roulette table. And I'm going to put it on whatever color I feel is hot at the moment. Okay. And if I win, we're going to take the winnings and go gamble and keep that initial 100. Okay. That makes I sense. Like that. Right. But, I like that. I like that you have a plan. I like you have a plan. No more gambling. So that's it. <laughs> one, one bet for the whole trip. One and done. Oh that my first gosh. One, that is responsible gambling. Okay. <laughs> No, you what's gonna in. happen okay, I like the plan is now. you're gonna like do that, plan. you're gonna lose it, you're gonna walk over to the ATM, Probably, and then you're gonna be like, and then you're gonna get emails for time. life saying, yeah. "Hey, I come to your room." <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but you know what? Enjoy it. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's the plan. The I will plan say, Sean definitely... used to be like, like he, oh my gosh, was that our honeymoon? He stayed up one night, the whole night gambling. I was like, I'm gonna go back to the room. He's like, okay. He went back to the room with me, and then. <laughs> After we went to sleep, he like woke up and he like, went to the back to the casino. Oh, I can until, see it. Like, and this is back the in the morning. days. I can see it. And then Especially he was if there gone. was some kind of like competitive thing going on with like the dealer or something. Oh, I can yeah. definitely see. Well, that. it was one. There was only one competition <coughs> with myself. I needed to hit number seven, and it would A not roulette? hit number it's seven. Number. Yeah. A roulette. Yes, <laughs> I wanted seven. No, he plays. He plays the individual. No, numbers, I play a lot more. Oh, he's, yeah. he's hit them a lot of yeah. times. No, I just yeah. needed to hit seven. Sure. You know, he sure. puts like, he, sure. I don't even I think know. I think it's about craps like at first. But I'm the, the person table. that's putting down like 90 chips on the table, yeah, like every, all stacked. And all the, every, I really enjoy all it. All the scenarios. Every turn. Yeah. I usually do pretty well you know, until I don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, he'll get ahead. See, I don't know how to play like that. I just do the color, maybe odd or even, and... You know, yeah. like, because you could put it, like, on the, the axis. So. Yeah. Yeah, you can put it on the corners. Mm -hmm. You can put it. Yeah, like, I don't know yeah. about that. Yeah. But it's fun. Blackjack it's fun. is fun, I, too. I so. tried to learn. What's that game? Craps. Craps. Yeah, Craps. It's... And it's hard. I knew how to play bones or, you know, dice in the street. That was easier, right? <laughs> roll the seven, roll the eleven. I've never heard you know. bones. Bones is dominoes, sorry. Oh. Yeah, that's a... Nickname for Grandpa played Ten to Get In. You never heard? You ever play, you ever play some bones? In, no. I know I play some dominoes. <laughs> yeah, I never. I wasn't allowed to. We didn't even have. <laughs> yeah. That uh, was like Grandpa's favorite thing to do. Yeah. When dominoes he got older. and cards. Yeah. You had that Italian card game with the clubs on it and stuff. But yeah. I dominoes really was something I learned in middle school. Hodges Ben. Uh, dominoes and, and craps in the hallway. Mm. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've That's never good knew times. people were playing games in the hallway. That's because you were yeah. studying. I know. Yeah. I had no idea that was happening. <laughs> you were, you were back to being a okay. successful doctor. <laughs> I was just trying to be cool. She was studying for her next, oh the next God. test. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> Cramming. Yeah. I was a grade ahead that. of you. I, so seventh grade, I was at Hodges Bend. I think I was you were only there sixth, sixth grade, grade yeah. Because yeah. then they opened up a whole other middle school. Yeah, because that like, one was pretty rough. That it was. There was, yeah. I mean, there's some gang fights there occasionally, but nothing you couldn't bob and weave out of. But, that's but why. yeah, you know, I think I think we covered yeah, a lot fun. of ground and, <laughs> you know, we all different subjects, which I love. Sure. I wouldn't change. We can definitely get more risque next time. It's like, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> gotta, I got to know the parameters, you know. There's no parameters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, no parameters. You know, we get to we get to figure it out as we go. Cool. Sweet. That was fun. Well, thank you for having me on uh, the podcast. Yeah. yeah appreciate appreciate you, man. Fun. Right back at you. Yep.